You are listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And I uh, just want to look at a, a scripture here real quick. But as we come together to worship the Lord this morning, how many of us know that you have a, you have a song of praise within your heart? Amen? Amen. You have a song within your heart, and sometimes we just don't have the words. Sometimes we may not know the words to the song. Or sometimes, you know, we just, we just feel like humming. We just feel like just, just expressing our heart, but through our voice in any way that we can. Sometimes, sometimes it's through the pain. Sometimes it's through the hurt. Sometimes it's through the confusion. It's many times we just don't know what it is. Or sometimes we're just so excited, we just don't really know how to handle it. But how many of us know that it's always coming to the Lord in the right way? Because God is a holy God. And he wants me and you to be able to come to him in his holiness. But how are we going to know his holiness unless we know him? Unless we seek him, unless we take that time with him to get to know him and how he is and what he requires from me and you. Because how many of us know that he wants us to have a heart of worship when we come together to him? He wants us not just to come and worship him however we feel like it, the way we think he should be worshiped, the way we think that he wants it to be not. No, it's a matter of, Lord, I'm here to praise you and glorify you. But, Lord, how do you want me to do it? Lord, how do you want me to be today? And it starts with a matter of our heart. It's a matter of the heart in being able to come to the Lord and praise and worship, but being thankful for all he has done. See, there's a man in the Bible by the name of Uzzah. And David was so excited to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. But he didn't go back and check to see how to do it. See, now David wasn't wrong in his fact that he wanted to bring the, the presence of God into Jerusalem. The problem was is that he didn't go back to see how did God want him to do it. What did God require? What did God require in his holiness? And because David did all of these different things and he set everything up so nice. But as they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, it says that they stumbled. And when Uzzah laid out his hand to stop it from falling, it says that the Lord struck him dead. And David was fearful and he was angry that God would do that. But what ended up happening is David had to go back and look to the scriptures to re be reminded that it was the Levites that were supposed to carry in the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God. And so David had to go back to the scripture. It took him three months that he left it in the house of Obed-Edom. And while the presence was there, Obed-Edom was blessed because the presence of God was there. Amen? And how many of us know that's an awesome, exciting thing when the presence of God is there? Amen? That is an awesome and exciting area to be in is when the presence of God is with you. When the presence of God is in, in amongst you. And not only that, but when the presence of God is living within you. Amen? Amen. And we could be excited this morning knowing that God is faithful. So David got things right with God. Before he went back and brought forth that Ark of the Covenant, before he was out there dancing and a call was looking at him like, what's the matter with you? He was joyous because the presence of the Lord was coming into Jerusalem. Amen? Amen? But before he did all that, he got his heart ready. He repented. Unfortunately, Uzzah paid the consequence for that mistake. But it didn't stop David from continuing to seek the Lord, to repent, and to still bring the presence of the Lord into Jerusalem. But he had to get his heart right. And this morning, let that be our heart this morning. That we come to the Lord together today to praise him. But that we make sure our heart is right. Are you holding anything against anyone today? Are the desires in you so strong right now that you have resentment? What is it in your heart right now? See, I get that this is a time of worship, and this is my time to praise. Yes, it is. But before you get your praise on, get your heart right with God, the one to whom you're praising. Because if you're not doing so, then you're praising yourself, you're glorying your, by yourself, and that's not what this is all about. We're here to glorify Jesus. 
And I say that today because I got to examine my heart as we all got to examine our heart this morning. So are we here today with a heart of worship today to praise the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. But even when our hearts are not right, what do we do? We repent and get that heart right. Willing to acknowledge our shortcomings. Are we willing to acknowledge our shortcomings? Are we willing to acknowledge when we're rebellious? See, David was upset with God. He was upset that Uzzah died, that God would do that. But it wasn't God's fault. It was David's. And it wasn't until David was willing to acknowledge that, that he was able to get things right and see clearly how to come into the Lord's presence, how to do things right, and that was through obedience to God's word and what he requires. And because of it, it says in verse 16, verse 1, I mean, chapter 16 of 1 Chronicles, verse 1, and they brought in the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and they offered burnt offering and peace offerings before God. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord and distributed it to all Israel, both men and women, to each a loaf of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then he appointed some of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord to invoke, to thank, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, and second to him were Zechariah, Jael, Shemaramoth, Jehel, Matatiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jael, who were to play harps and lyres. Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Benaiah and Jehaziel, the priests, were to blow trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant of God. Then on that day, David first appointed that thanksgiving be sung to the Lord by Asaph and his brothers. And verse 8 says, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, Sing to him, sing praises to him, and tell of all his wonder, wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Israel, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Amen. And this was the heart of David after repentance and obedience to the word of God. And it's so amazing that we can come to the Lord with an open heart, a free heart, not holding on to that unforgiveness, rebellion, sin, confusion, whatever it may be. Lay it down at the feet of Jesus this morning. And let us praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you today. We come before your throne this day, Lord, giving you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. And Father, today, Lord, we come with hearts of gratitude, hearts of praise and worship, Lord. But most of all, Lord, we come with hearts of repentance. And we come together this morning in acknowledgement, Lord, that, Father God, you would examine our hearts, Lord. And if there be any sin within our heart of rebellion, of pride, of arrogance, of jealousy, of covetousness, of murder. Lord God, whatever it may be in our hearts this morning, Lord, maybe it's unforgiveness, Lord. But Father, today in Jesus' name, we just thank you that we could come into your holy presence and praise you and glorify you and worship you. So Father, this morning we ask you to forgive us of our sins, to forgive us of all unrighteousness and uncleanliness, and Father God, to wash our minds and our hearts this day. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you this day, Father, to help us, Lord, to continue to forgive those that we may hold anything against today. Because, Lord Jesus, you command us to do so. Father, in areas, Lord God, that you have been working in our hearts to be obedient, we ask you to forgive us, Lord, for our disobedience. And today, Lord Jesus, we repent of our sins. And today is the day of salvation. And your word says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us of our sins and to purify us of all unrighteousness. So, Father, this day we just thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. 
And we give you the honor, Lord, as we come together with a heart of praise and worship and adoration unto you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this morning as we come together and worship the Lord, I'm just going to ask that you just take this time just to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, but with your words today. We'll hum a malady, malady with you, but just feel free just to sing unto the Lord with the song that is in your heart today. Feel free just to give the Lord the praise, because how many of us know he is an awesome God? Amen. Oh, well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church this morning. Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord and just grateful to be in the presence of the Lord together today. Grateful for all that the Lord is doing. Just a couple of quick announcements. This Wednesday, there is Bible study here in the annex room as we are going through the book of Acts chapter 20. So we encourage you to join us in Bible study, studying the word together and just coming together and growing in the relationship with the Lord. Amen. So that'll be in Acts chapter 20 this coming Wednesday. So we encourage you to join us. Amen. Women of God, women of God, women of God. We're all the women of God this morning. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, you have a women's ministry this coming Friday night at 7 p.m. here in the Annex Room. So you guys enjoy. Have a great time. Everything will be set up there at 7 p.m. this coming Friday. So women of God, we encourage you to come on out for the time of fellowship, time of the word, and just as the Lord just brings you guys together. So just looking forward to what the Lord has and be praying for you guys as well. Amen. So we're just grateful to the Lord that we can do these things. Praise God. And then next uh, Sunday, we have 915 uh, morning prayer in the word of God. So we're still going through the book of Psalm 119. Brother Gabriel taught this morning on Psalm 119 and the importance of seeking the word of God and looking to the Lord through his word. Amen. So he brought that out this morning. That is already um, on the YouTube channel if you'd like to go back and check that out and, and study along with us and pray with us. Amen. And then also next Sunday will be our normal service. But also at the end of the month on July 31st, we will be having baptisms. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, let's give the Lord a shout. Amen. So that the July 31st, at a, well, we're going to have a baptism class at 9.15 in the morning, and uh, we'll be going over what baptism, baptism is, and then we'll take some time of prayer, and then we'll prepare for the baptisms. Amen? So that water will be nice and warm and ready to go. Amen? I'll try not to throw too much chlorine in there, but... We'll be ready to go on, on, uh, on that Sunday. So just really looking forward to, to what the Lord has prepared for those that are pre that already signed up and ready, and those that are thinking about it, and those that maybe don't even realize that they're going to know the Lord by then, amen, and they're going to want to get baptized that day. Praise God. So we're going to be believing the Lord to bring in the new people as well, and, and for those that don't even know yet, but... They're walking towards the Lord right now, and the Lord's got a plan and a purpose for them. Amen? So just really looking forward to what the Lord is doing that and just grateful to God. How many of us know he's faithful? He is faithful. We got to trust him as we wait upon him and as we look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen? And you know what? And we just continue to do so together. Praise God. So really grateful to the Lord just to be able to be here and to be able to see all that the Lord is doing. Just remember, it's all in the Lord's time. Just give him his time and let him do what he's going to do. Amen? Because we know what he's, he's, worked, he's doing a work through all of us individually. And how, much, how many of us know that the Lord knows what he needs to do within us? Amen? He knows better than ourselves the work that needs to be done through us and within us. And you know what? I'm grateful to God because there's a lot of hurts many times that I don't even realize that are there that I've never dealt with. You know, things that come up to the surface, you know, that just even recently, it's just like, wow, Lord, I don't even know that's there. You know, but I know there's something you're working out through me. And, you know, this is the process. It's just, you know what, trusting him, yielding to him, and allowing him to do that work through us. Not trying to hide from it, not trying to act like it's not there, not trying to be a super Christian. But just being able to realize, Lord, I need you. And, Lord, I realize there's some things that you're working out through me. And, God, I'm going to trust you through it. But nevertheless, your will be done, not my will be done. Amen? And we can continue to trust God through it. Praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to pray for the tithes and offerings this morning. And uh, feel free to put your tithes and offerings here in the back or at zealot at newlivingwaychurchdowney at gmail.com. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time today. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for there is no other like you, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, as we give unto you, Lord. We give with a cheerful heart, my God. We thank you for all the provisions, my God, for our finances today. We thank you for the job 
jobs. We thank you, Father God, for the bills getting paid. We thank you for the car being paid off. We thank you for the house being paid off. We thank you, Lord, that the rent is covered, my God. We thank you that those repairs in Jesus' name are completed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, for the repairs on the vehicles, Lord, that they will be done. And you've already made provision for all that is needed for us, my God. Because, Lord Jesus, your word says that you already know what we need before we even ask you, Lord. But we just thank you today, Father God, because we give, Lord Jesus, acknowledging that it's all yours, my God. And Lord, our finances, Lord, we're asking you to help us to be good stewards and good managers, Lord, of what you have entrusted us to, my God. Because, Lord Jesus, we don't want to have pockets full of holes, Lord God, where it just seems like it always comes in and it's always gone, Lord. But Father God, help us to come to you first, Lord, and ask you, Lord Jesus, to give us the wisdom and the guidance and the direction that we need, Father, in our finances, Lord. And in that, Father, help us to be obedient, Lord Jesus, in our giving and in what we do with the finances that you have entrusted us with, Father. So, Father, we just thank you this day, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all the provisions in this house. We thank you for meeting all of our needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that if we struggle in this area, Lord God, just within ourselves, we thank you that we can do all things the Christ who strengthens us, my God. So, Father, we just thank you for this time together today. We thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, for the fellowship and the oneness in you this morning, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, rich kids rooted in Christ, you are dismissed this morning. Amen. We do have class this morning, so you guys have a good time at class next door. And just really grateful to the Lord for what he's prepared for you guys this morning. Amen. So this morning, we got a bit of a, a buffet this morning. Amen. It's always been called here and uh, looking forward to what the Lord has prepared this morning. So this morning, we're going to welcome up uh, Brother Oscar this morning. He's going to share the word of the Lord with us this morning. And then after him, we'll be coming Brother Gabriel. Amen. Amen. So let's welcome up Brother Oscar. Amen. Hello. Hello. Okay. There we go. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Oh, well, first of all, I thank God for the opportunity to be able to stand here before you and share the word. And secondly, I thank Pastor for the opportunity. Um, the day we spoke, you know, and um, it's, just, it's just beautiful to be able to share the word with the brethren. You know, I thank God, like I said, once again, for the opportunity to be behind, be behind this pulpit. And standing here at this moment brings back a lot of memories to me. It's not new, but I do feel a little bit nervous, and I like that feeling because it lets me know that I depend on God to be able to carry through with this. I don't stand on my own. If it were just talent, it was just a gift, it, it will flow, and then I will depend on me. And therefore, I rely on him to be able to do this. And everything that we do, I acknowledge him and give him honor and give him praise. We pray uh, right quickly. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Father, for this time. We thank you, Lord Father, for the praise and worship that went before you, Lord. May it be acceptable, Lord Father, to you. May it be a pleasant aroma before you, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord Father, for your presence here in this house. And we ask you, Lord Father, I ask you at this time that you may lead me, Lord, to bring forth your word that you have put it in my heart. Thank you, Lord Father. Let our ears be tentative. Let our hearts be receptive to receive the word that you've spoken today. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So how many, how many say that uh, Holy Spirit filled people are in the house today? Amen. Amen, right? The word says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So don't say so. Just say you're redeemed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that in mind, if you open your Bibles, I'm kind of piggybacking on uh, several messages that were preached in the last couple of months. And as we get there, you will see that a lot of the scripture pretty much relates what what's come forth from this pulpit. And the reason I chose to go this way was because God really put something in my heart to, to bring it forth, to to reiterate and to little emphasize little pointers of the word that has been spoken directly from this pulpit. You know, I, I'm very analytical. I like to pick up on things and study and do comparisons, and, and that's just part of my nature. It, it, it's, it's me. God built me that way, and it helps me in what I do for a living. But with that said, let me read the scriptures. Matthew 9, verses 35 to 38. It reads as follows. Jesus went about in all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he said he was moved with compassion for them 
because they were harassed and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest indeed is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore to the Lord of the harvest, that the Lord of the harvest will send out laborers into the harvest. Again, little did they know that Jesus was telling them, pray for yourselves, because they were the laborers. And nowadays, we are the laborers. We are to edify and build each other up as we are the children of God. We, what we learn is not for us to keep to ourselves. And that's what I want to get to. We're Romans 10. Let's go to Romans 10, 10 through 15. Because I want to point some things out before I actually start putting this together. And I want to point, like I said, if you follow me, you start to see how these verses come together. Romans 10, verses 10 through 15. The reason follows. I mean, sorry, reasons follows. It says, "For with the heart one believes, so resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made, resulting in salvation." For the Scripture says, "Whoever believes in Him will not be disappointed." So, so, for there is no distinction between Jew, Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, and is rich to all who call on Him. For whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved question how then will they call on him whom they have not believed how will they believe in him who they have not heard how will they hear without a preacher and how will they preach unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of peace who bring the glad tidings tidings of good things what I want to emphasize is Say, how beautiful are the feet of those who go out and preach, who those who share. And I put it in my, my personal situation. I cannot contain any time I have the opportunity to share with my loved ones what I have found in Christ. That I have found the meaning of true love, joy, peace that surpasses all understanding, comfort, you know, provision. I have come to trust God in everything that I do. When, I, when I'm presented with a career opportunity, the first thing I do, I don't look at the money. I go and I pray. I seek God first because I've seen what God has done for me. The door he has opened before me. How he's entrusted me with things and how I get the opportunity in every situation. People will ask me, did you go through that? How is it that you went through that? I say one simple thing. I went through that. But God. See, it, people look at the worst part of it. I didn't understand what I was going through at the moment when I went through certain situations in my life. But now I see it. Now I see it. it. It brought me to a point where I had to trust God. I had no other means. I had no one else to trust you. I had no other way out but to trust God. And he made a way. He made a way. So I said, I cannot contain within me what he has done for me. When the opportunity is presented to say what, what I found in Christ. He said, the true meaning of love. So how much is that love? That he sacrificed his own son for me. That is how love is. That even the word says, when this is love, then while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even before we came to the knowledge of knowing there was a Savior for us, he died for us. He died for me. He died for you. So taking that into consideration, and like I said, everybody, when I said, how many saved and you know holy spirit filled people were here i mean can you relate with me i mean i mean at that time it's, if we say that we're filled with the holy spirit and we're saved how can we not share with that that has been provided for us i have a lot of loved ones that i want them to come to the knowledge and repentance of lord of the lord so that could be where i know where the uh, word that says that we ought to be where we will be with him before his presence I have lost a lot of loved ones in the last couple of years. But I stand firm on my rock because I know where they are. Because not because of what I say, but because of what his word says. And I believe him. And I take that word to heart. It has to carry on day in and day out. You know, it's not simple. Believe me, it's not simple. Like I said, people will say, you went through that? I say, yes, I did. I say, how did you make it through? But God, simple. But God, you cannot go wrong with God. God will never fail you. God will never disappoint you. 
God answers prayer, even though at times it's hard to understand a simple no. But he answers. He answers. And we need to learn to accept his will and his purpose for our lives. At times, like I said, you feel disappointed, but in the long run, you will see that God guided you the right way when you get to see it from a distance and not when you're in the mist. Because when you're in the mist, you, you, you're driving or you're guided walking a little bit timidly. And you don't know necessarily which direction to go. But as you allow him to guide you, when you're out of the mist, you get to see like, oh, that's where I was headed. I could see it from a different angle. But at the moment, you don't understand it. You know? I want to move on to Jude. Jude is a small book in the Testament towards the end of the Bible. And it's a book that I find extremely passionate for the love of the church, for who it was written to. It was written for us. Uh, we could read Jude 1 through 3. We see the greeting. And let me read it. It reads as follows. It says, Jude is servant of, of Jesus Christ and a brother of James to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ. It says, mercy to you and peace and love be multiplying. This verse says, Beloved, while I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I was constrained to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once and for all delivered to the saints. This is the intro. He said, I, I wanted to write to you about this, but God guided me to write to you about other things. See, and this is where the twist comes in. If you, if you follow the whole book, you'll see what he's warning the church about. He did the intro. See, I wanted to write to you about our common faith. But instead, I'm going to write to you about this. And he goes about writing about the things that have crept into the church. About teachings that were coming into the church. About those that had departed from the true gospel of Christ. You know, teaching for their own gain. Selling uh, promises of, of healing and, and, and prosperity. What we see nowadays. It's, it's not new. All these things that we see today in churches is not new. But he's warning the church about these things and said, I earnestly, I felt it in my heart that God guided me to warn you about these things. But it doesn't end there. Uh, stay in the same book. Uh, verses 16 through 35. And it reads like this. It says, these are murmurers, complainers, so walking after their lust and their mouth speaks proud things. Showing respect of persons to gain advantage. Says, but you, beloved, remember the words which happened to be spoken before you by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Says, they said to you, in the last time, there will be mockers walking after their own ungodly lust. Says, These are they who cause division and are sensual, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, keep building up yourselves in the, your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Say, on some have compassion, making a distinction. And on some, on some, saved by snatching them out of the fire with fear, hating even the clothing stained by the flesh. Says, now to him who is able to keep them from stumbling and to present, the fault, to present them fault, uh, fault, faultless before the presence of his glory in great joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power for now and forever. Amen. But he warned the church. He went back and warned the church. And saying, beware of these people. But then he emphasizes something. He says, on them, on some, show compassion. Show compassion. And then some go in and drag them out. They're headed towards the fire pit. Go and drag them out. We need to show the love of Christ. Even though some of these people have departed from the church and are walking astray, it's still our duty. We, little did you know that when you, you came into the kingdom of God, you were enlisted in special ops. Think about it. He's urging us to go and rescue those that are headed to destruction. We're our special ops. 
We're in his military. You know, we represent Christ on earth. So why wouldn't we care if somebody's running down the street and I have the urgency to run out and say, hey, you're about to get hit by a car. Let's drag them. Even if by force we have to drag them onto the sidewalk. We're not just going to let them run out into the street like a crazy person. You know, it would be, it'd be um, caring of us. I mean, that's just in the natural things. No, that's just the perspective. But those that we know, like I said, I, I like and I have a lot of friends that practice different religions. And very respectfully, I don't like to argue, but I like pointing things out. And I like studying the word. And I just respond with the word. He says, oh, well, they taught me this in church. And I know it's a little bit misleading. I said, well, did you see what the word says about this? Let's go read this. I mean, I'm not going to read it to you, but I want you to read it and tell me what you understand about it. You know, very respectfully, we don't argue, we don't debate, but I just share. I like to share the word and make people think. And like I said, this urgency that we're called to do, it's a duty. And if our command and commander in chief has given, an, given us orders, why are we so stagnant? You know, why, why does the church has, church has seemed to have lost that, 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 that zeal to, to go out and proclaim the kingdom of God to the lost? Yeah, we know a lot of most people you know, walking through these doors. But it's not about going knocking in all doors. It's what we take out of when we walk out of these doors that we take with us that makes a difference. At work, at the store, in the car wash. At the gas station and people that cut you off, you've been waiting to get in place and somebody backed up. You've seen it. I've seen it. Do we go like, hey, what's, or do we just like, oh, I missed out. I'll, I'll just wait. I'll wait for a different turn. I mean, are we different than the world or we just respond the same the way the world does? We're called to be the light and the salt of the world. But how is it that the light only wants to be with the light? Right? I mean, if, if the only way light shines and makes a big difference is when there's darkness. And somehow the church, and I'll say it, has not, has, wants nothing to do with those that are lost. And I'm not necessarily saying the world, because I wouldn't go into a nightclub, obviously, right? It's wrong. Because I'm representing and I'm carrying someone within me that has there proclaimed that he is alive and he is holy. But at the same time, I'm not going to deprive myself to go to a family party where I could be the light. It just happened last night. I had the attention of several young men that seeking answers as to how to guide their families. And all I could do is, but God. But God, I give them word. I said, God says this. God says that. No, guide your children. You thought my children want me to go to church with them. Great. What are you, what are you even thinking about it? Take your children to church. Show them that you're present. What more do you want? You don't have to drag them. Now they're dragging you. That's a plus. Give in. No, just give in. Let God do his work and show what has already been planted in your heart. No, and let me continue with this. I said, but how can we do it? How can we show the world a difference? And I don't know if many of you have seen the, the movie uh, The Last Samurai. Some of you have seen it. There's certain phrases in that movie that really pierce my heart when it comes to ministry. And at the close, I'll just talk about this one. The very last phrase, when it comes to the end, the emperor comes to Tom Cruise. He plays a general that actually fought against him. And then he gets, he, he was presenting him honor and bringing the sword of a person that fought against him and used to be one of his, like, leaders, a consul to him before but the movie has certain ups and downs. But something is said there. The emperor comes and asks him, were you there? He's like, yes. He says, were you there at the end? Yes. He said, tell me how he died. The response that closes in that point is beautiful. And it pierced my heart because he said, no, I will not tell you how he died. I will tell you how he lived. See, that's what we need to come to, our easiest way to minister. The world knows how Christ died. It's in the history books. It's movie after movie, you know, how he died. But we have failed to show the world that he lives. 
I'll tell you how he lived and how he lives today. How? He lives in me. He lives through me. He lives through you. In everything we do, Christ is not dead. Christ lives today. He lives. And therefore, we need to present a living Christ to the world. And not only the world, but to the church. To the church. We need to love, need to come to love the church, not because of who's in it, but because of who died for it. See, we don't need to love everybody here evenly in that way. But it, let's say, for example, if I were not here next Sunday, would somebody take the time to care? Would somebody say, hey, what happened to that brother that preached last week? Is he okay? He's sick? What happened? Is the family, you know, pastor, do you know something about him? I mean, will somebody take the time to ask and inquire, where is that brother? We call ourselves brothers. We're called to love each other. But will somebody take the time to care for each other? Look around you. I mean, will you really take the time to care and ask, hey, is that brother okay? Is he in need? Does he need anything? Hey, brother such and such is out of a job. Hey, hey, brother, uh, can we come together? Does he need help? Can he afford at this moment to pay his bills? That's love. This is exactly what I was talking to my wife today. I said, I spoke something with my cousin yesterday. He said, I love my family. I said, great. Did you know that in that short phrase that you just said, there's a huge word that's found in between. And he said, what? It's called sacrifice. Love is sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son. See, in those words that we say and we take them so lightly at times, there's a lot of heaviness that comes along with it. Love is sacrificial. It take, dedicates time. It take, might dedicate money. It might take money. It might take resources. It might take you learning certain things to be able to rise up to a different level for the love of your family to guide them. Because we're called to be the pastors of our own homes before anything else. So how can we guide them without knowing? I'll tell you, I, I grew a lot in the Word because I had to learn. When I decided to get involved in the church and, and teach Sunday school kids, I had to prepare myself. I had to present myself with a lot of ans I mean, answers to questions that might present themselves. So it urged me to learn and to instruct and to teach. So it came easy afterwards because it was already in me. But what I'm saying is, church, we need to learn to love the church, not because of who's in it, but because of who died for it. The same price. He said, for you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. With the precious love of the Lord, I mean the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, love is enduring. Love is patient. First Corinthians 13. See, but at the end of the day, if I have no love, I have all these talents. But at the end of the day, if I have no love, it means absolutely nothing. It's just resounding symbol. And just noise. And what I'm saying is like, we need to be true. We need to be true. People, people need to get to know you and get to know your reputation. What do you stand for? At work? With your family? Do you stand for what's right? Or do you give in? That one giving in might cost you leading them to Christ. Because they will see you're no different than I am. So therefore, let's live what we preach. We flaw, we fall, but let's get up. Let's get up. You know, we got people without knowing. We got people looking up to us. Believe it or not. I mean, I, I, I focus on needing my family, but little did I know that behind me, I have a lot of young men looking up to me without even knowing. Having conversations with them, I get to see that they want to learn. So you did a good job. I'm like, no. Again, but God. God is always in the equation. God, when people used to say, do you have, don't you have problem, family problems? Of course I do. Two different worlds, two different up, up, upbringings. I said, but at the end of the day, you know what keeps us together? A nucleus. It's something called like a glue. It's called Christ. It's called Christ. We might offend each other at the end of the day. Hey, I'm sorry. Let's pray together. Let's come to Christ. Let's come before God and present our differences. But let, us not, let not that separate you from me. Because then we develop resentment. And instead of bringing us together, it just splits you apart. And it consumes you from the inside out. The saying, and that all has to do with one big thing, which was the fall of Satan. It's called pride. 
the skull of pride. Let's see, let's move on. Romans. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it reads as follows. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Don't be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is good, well-pleasing, well, uh, and perfect will of God. So we need to renew our minds. Again, but it's called a sacrifice. So how else are we going to bring the world to get to know a living Christ? By our sacrifice. Our lives are a living sacrifice. The things that we accept, the things that we don't do, it's all about decisions. God will not force you to do anything. But at the end of the day, it's all about will that he gives us. But let's not misrepresent God. No, let's not. If we are true to what we believe in, let's stand on that rock. You say we walk by faith, let's walk by faith. You know, it's not easy. Believe me, it's not easy. Like I said, if I could share with you the things that I've gone through, you would say again, how? The how? To say, but God, trusting in God. From finances, I got to know God as my provider, you know, my comforter. Because, my, like I said, my loving shelter. My, that's when we sang that song. You know, my strong tower, my citadel, where I can find refuge. Because I'm, I'm the person that's always guiding others. And people look up to me. And at times I'm like, who do I look up to? I have him always. I can count on him. You know, and I thank God for that. But let's see. Now close with this scripture right quick. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. Which also relates about living and being a sacrifice. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. And it reads as follows. It says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is, and it is I no longer that I live. But Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So I don't reject the grace of God, for if righteousness is through the law, then Christ died for nothing. So, but the life that I live now, I live through Christ who loved me and, and rescued me. See, it's, it's in the scriptures. It's in the scriptures. It says, the life that I now live, I live through him. And therefore, he lives through me. Because the very same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us today. How much more empowering. And like I said, representing the kingdom of God. And be conscientious of what we do and where we go. That we are the temple of God. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you. That's an awesome word. Real encouraging. I need to hear. Sometimes we just need to sit and be refreshed. You know, how many of us, we know we're, we, 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 uh, we go to the gyms. It's not natural to go to gyms, but, you know, sometimes when we go and work out and we take a little couple of laps, you know, around the track, you know, we'll get tired, man. So when we rest, we just need to sit down and relax and cool down. And, and this word that came forth, man, just refreshed me, man. And, and I thank God for God's timing. I, I just thank God what God's doing in this church. I can't speak about uh, other churches. I can speak about what's going on in this body. And I'm excited what I'm seeing. If I didn't stick around, if I would have just threw the towel and kicked, you know, and kicked it to the side and went off on my merrily way, I probably would have came back to this church more messed up than I would have came in the first time. But I thank God that it is by his spirit that has kept me here, has rooted me and grounded me to be filled with his spirit, be filled with his word. And I'm excited for you, Oscar, because God has his way of bringing us back. He knows what he's doing. Trust God. God's timing is the best timing. Bank of his word. It's all in his word. I was encouraged. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me another opportunity 
Father, right now, Father, we just thank you this morning, Father. We're going to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor this morning, Father. And thank you, Father, for another opportunity, Father, of breath to bring your word, Father. Let it be your words, Father. Holy Spirit, have your way, Father. Thank you for the words that already went forth. And I thank you, Father, for the fruit coming forth this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. So let's turn our Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. And for, for today, what God put in my spirit, God, God wants us to bless others. God wants us to be of help, not just within ourselves, right? But let's help others. You know, we're always so caught up, man. I'm, I'm going to pay the rent. I'm going to go to the movies. I'm going to get a haircut, right? I'm gonna, there's so much things that we're going to do. And we're going to go to the grocery store, right? Praise be to God. We're going to have food for less. Amen. Hallelujah for food for less, right? Hallelujah, man. I, how many, I got witnesses over here, food for less. But we're always thinking about ourselves. But how much do we know that there's other people that don't have nothing? And we're going through our lives, right, cutting people off. Ah, uh, sucks to be him, right? This is stuff that I have to go through, man. This is the flesh. I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you what I go through sometimes. But I have to always be mindful of what God has given me. And we're stewards of what he's given us. We're supposed to take care of what he's given us. And are we taking care of that? So let's turn to Philippians chapter 2. And it goes like this, verses 1 through 11. Verses 1 through 11. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind. Having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. And here's emphasized on verse 3 and 4. Do not do nothing from self-ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Verse 4. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Verse 7, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed him the name that is above every name. So that the name, so, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God. I'm not here to give you my words. Okay? I'm tired of just giving some of my good ideas, my stinking thinking. This is my view. This is God's word. And this is inspired by men and women like us. But, but powered by God, inspired. He inspired people. He inspired people like me and you to write the, to, to write the Bible. Man, God is God can do that. Only God can do this. So we're supposed to not just only look in the interest of us. We have to look in the interest of others. Maybe there's some people in your life that I can't touch, and that's so true. And there's some people in my life that you guys can't touch, that you guys can't minister, you guys can't witness. We need to be serious about the things of God. He wants us to be ambassadors of Christ. 
We need to be a reflection like Oscar was saying. And it's not easy, right? <laughs> I'm not here to say that I got to figure it all, everything out. I'm, no, I don't. But with God, all things are possible this morning. And he's doing a new work. Every single time that you wake up in the morning, it's a gift of God. It's a breath of God. It's God that gives you the breath. As the Bible says, as long as you got breath, there's hope. There's hope for another day. Maybe you messed up. Maybe you didn't give to the needy. Maybe you didn't, you didn't, you passed someone that was on the side of the road with a flat tire. And maybe you said you had the jack. You had the, you had all the pump. You had maybe the battery charger to charge up their battery. But maybe you didn't do it. But you can do it today. Don't beat yourself up for today is a day of salvation, man. Don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about tomorrow for today has enough worries in itself. Don't, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, of timidity, but a power and a love and a soundness of mind. You need to be disciplined into the things of Jesus. And he wants us to think about others, okay? You're God's extension hand. You're his extended hand to touch others. Your agreement, right? Amen. Man, you, you, God wants to use your life. He wants to continue using your life, right? Because we received everything that we have today free. Freely we have received. Freely we will give. Let's turn there. Let's go to Matthew 10. This is God's word, Matthew 10. God, we're stewards of God, what God's given us, man. Who are we to say we're not going to give it out? God's given us, man, gifts and talents, finances, a smile, a hug, a touch, man, a words of wisdom, words of knowledge to bless others. And we're over here just about us, man. We're just going to just get a point A to point B. I'm running late to work, man. Forget about the ones in the middle, man. I'm just going to try to get... And sometimes we're, it's like that, huh? The pressure of the life, we're just, sometimes we're just so in a hurry. But if we just sit and rest, right? And God wants us to be a blessing. God wants us to put others first before ourselves. And this is the demonstration. I mean, God, God put himself. God gave his only begotten son that who so died for whosoever Believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He died for us. He, he, he at a, in an instant, a blinking of an eye, he did that for me and you. Man, only God can do such a thing. Only God can show that love. And we're supposed to demonstrate that because we're his disciples. You know, we're, we're striving for that. For God gave us the, the, here, well, I, let me read chapter 10, verse number 8. And he quickened us, and he told his disciples, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without pain, now give without pain. He's calling us to the mission field, just like Oscar was brought out. He's calling us to make disciples, to lay hands on the the, the sick, and we're going to see him recover. But do you believe that? We need to believe because we need to believe because faith, how, how do we get faith in here? How do we get faith? How does faith raise inside of you? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. There's no shortcuts. I can't make this up. I can't tell you another thing. This is the way your faith raises. It's by hearing and by hearing the word of the Lord. That's how faith raises. So we receive this free. So let's give it out free, man. Who are we to be? Man, this is all me. Look at all me. Having pockets full of seeds, man. And they're trying to witness to no one. Man, you've been to so many services, man. You know, you got seasoned with salt, man. Flavor, man, to go witness to that one that's probably, you know, he's in sin. You don't got to go over there and tell him how bad he's doing. No, just bless him. Show him your love. Show him how God loves him. Has a perfect plan for his life. And it's never too late with God. God could turn it around in one moment, in a godly moment. God could turn their life 
right side up for the glory of God. You have the answer, and his name is Jesus. Jesus, 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 the lover of your soul. Christ in us, the hope of glory lives inside of you. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. You got to believe that with all your heart. He didn't give you halfway full. He gave you the same spirit. He wants you to go there for witness because you have received this free, free of charge. It didn't cost us nothing. It cost God everything. What did it cost him? His son. His son, the perfect lamb of God. Not to be taken lightly. God's the holy God. We ain't just going to come up here like this, put up our feet up on the furniture, man, and come out here demanding some stuff, man. God's a reverend. God will be magnified and he will be, he will be worshipped. He will be magnified. I will be exalted, says the Lord. But Jesus Christ gave us the greatest example, and it's found in Matthew 20. And just a couple of chapters away. Verses 28. And it says like so. It says, Matthew 20, verse 28. And it goes, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life ransom for many. You see, God's giving us special instruction. He's giving us an example. Like if you needed like some type of a, a sign, right, or, 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 or some type of structure, here's the structure, okay, that he didn't come to be served. The perfect lamb of God, the one when he came down on earth, no one recognized him. He was rejected, even in his own town. The savior of the world, the Messiah, the promised one. No one, man. He's just a carpenter. He's a, Joseph's son, get out of here. They didn't even recognize him. God, man, Jesus in the flesh, if they knew, they could just touch him, man. God could have made, Jesus would have done a miracle. Little did they know exactly, brother. Man, there's so, so much good stuff in here. Perfect example. But he came to serve. Imagine this. God the Father. He, could, he don't need to do nothing. But God, man, he set it up so we can win. He set this up so we can come under his lordship, and serve with one another. Come alongside our pastor. Oh, pastor, what time do you open the doors? What time is prayer? Oh, what's up, what's up with all these weeds over there? There's so much stuff to do in the house of God. And we just want to just, I'm not here to beat you up. I've been there and I've done that. And that's just, I'm using illustrations here. But there's so much thing that God has called you. I don't know what God has spoken to you in your living room, in your bedroom, in your, in your prayer closet. God's been speaking to you guys because God's always speaking. And he's going to see it to completion. But he wants us to serve. He gave us the greatest example. And that was a great discussion right there, right above the couple scriptures above. It says, Whoever wanted to be a leader, this is how you be. You want to be a leader? <laughs> you want to be a leader? New Living Way Church, sons of God, but woman of God, man of God, child of God. You want to be a leader? Serve. That's what the scripture is saying. Serve. Want to be high? Well, those of you got to be, you got to go low. Got to submit. We're awakening. That happened to me. I thought I was going to get everything and I want to go and we're going to just. Go to the nations, right? Oh, man, I was in a rude awakening because the higher the calling, the higher the crazy stuff that happens to it, like Oscar was speaking, man. If you knew all the headaches 
and all the torment and all the sin and all the stuff that have been presented to me, man, you'll probably be like, oh, shoot, I'm going to need some real good medicine. Or Jesus, man, continuing you to persevere. Because Jesus is the one that called you, and he's going to get you to that place like you got Paul. God called Jesus. God tells Paul, you're going to go to Rome. And this vehicle that he used, right, to get him to Rome, it shipwrecks. Imagine that. So you get a promise from God. Hey, Paul, <laughs> you're going to go to Rome. And I know that you're in a ship full of criminals, right, that don't, don't that they're, they're, they're there. They're in that, they're in, he's in a criminal ship, a boat. It's like the county bus, county jail bus, those that can relate. It's a county jail bus. It's on the way to the county, right? If you guys can really relate, I can relate to this. So there's a, sh a ship, corn ship going to Rome. He's, he's, he's going to be persecuted, man. He's about to die for righteousness, for, the, for preaching the good news. But there's many people that are prisoners for, the, for murderers. And the vehicle that God uses breaks apart. I think it was Acts chapter 21, I think, if you want to go there. I'm not... I didn't plan to do this, but we're just going right here anyway. So God just going to have your way. So it shipwrecks. But God told Paul, be of good cheer. Do not, you're going to lose everything, right? But you no loss of life. And God still got him to Rome. Because God. God, what, what, what you're going, whatever vehicle that you think you're on, right, whatever it is, vessel, whatever vehicle, whatever manner, whatever direction, whatever he's using you to get you to, you're not going to get credit, man. You're not going to give credit to a church, to a pastor, to, to whatever it is that you're thinking that you're going to be so self-righteous that got me there. You're going to think there's no way I got here because God got me there. He lost everything. Even the boat, and when he got to the shore, a serpent got him. To make things worse, right? A viper. Jesus, man, I'm talking about a bad day. Talk about wanting to do witness, want to be in ministry, right? This is God's sake, man. But God got him through that too. And here he is. Prob Let's go to Proverbs 11.25. This is where I want to get to. God is faithful. God is so faithful. He's going to get you through. Because no weapon for and against you shall be able to prosper. Every mouth that rises up and gets in judgment. Man, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of those that have been called and sanctified. Check this out. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. It says, whoever brings blessings will be enriched. And the one who waters will himself be watered. Proverbs 11, verses 25. I got another translation here. And it says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So as you, if you're generous, there's a blessing that comes with that. As you refresh, as you equip, as you just encourage, as you minister, as you give, you will also be watered. You will also be ministered. That will be measured and bring back to you. It comes with a promise. It's better to give than to receive. It's a blessing in it. Sometimes I feel like, man, sometimes I just can't stand re like receiving, but it does feel good when we receive. But something is about it when you want to bless someone. I'm at my job. I see all the ones I oversee. 
and I just want to I just want to bless them with pizza. I want to bless them with some with ice cream, whatever it is. And God places it in my heart, and it feels so good, doesn't it? Right? I'm not the only one. It just it just feels awesome. And I don't want no pat on the back. I don't want no recognition. Last time I bought them Starbucks, I was like, man, there's 12 drinks outside. I told one person, first one, first first come, first serve. I don't tell them who it came from or whatever. Why? Because it's better to give than to receive. And God gave us this, man, so we can give it to the nation, give it to the world. This is how you know you're about to be my disciple, that if you love one another. That's how the people are going to know that we are his disciples if we love one another. Oh, we just want to help all the next church. We want to help each other right here. But how about helping the one that just passed by with the bike, man? You know, he's probably lost his mind. It's about the souls. Because we can easily entertain angels and demons and not knowing, right? That's the seriousness. Like it says in Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40. We never know. We will never know how serious this is. Because in that day, when we go to be with Jesus, he's going to say, well, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. <laughs> because when I was hungry, <laughs> you didn't give me no food. When I was thirsty, you give me no agua, no water, right? There's something serious that comes within the ministry. There's something serious that God wants to do in our lives. He wants to, because we so easily, as we entertain demons, we can all easily entertain angels. Not even knowing God could be using him on that bike, right? Oh, out of his mind, man. Probably didn't shower for a couple of days. But guess what? God's always challenging us. He wants to use your life to win his lay hands, man. Because there's many people that need to hear about Jesus. Let us do what he called us to do. God bless you guys. It's hot, amen? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, that's a good word, amen? Let's give the Lord a shout and some praise this morning for the word of the Lord that came forth today from both both brothers here today that have brought us a word today. And it's amazing that, you know, like Brother Gabriel said, it was just such a refreshing word, you know, as Brother Oscar brought the word and he brought the word today. And, you know, at the same time, it's like, man, it's like, it's, it reminds me, though, let's just, I kind of imagine myself, you know, getting home, and Letty having like this huge dinner for me, everything all prepared and ready to go, grilled cheese sandwich ready for me as a little snack, because I love grilled cheese, and a little quesadilla on the side, and then dinner, you know, and, and, and I just imagine getting there, right, and then like sitting down, oh, it feels good, you know, just relax, and then like, oh, you, you hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. You know, all right, go ahead and start eating, you know, I start eating a little bit, and then all of a sudden, you know what, but, um, we got some dog poop outside. Can you pick that up? Oh, and then, you know, the car is dirty. Can you wash it? Oh, and then this needs to get done. Thank God Letty does all the hardware stuff, so it's not heavy stuff. But, you know, it's like, wait a minute. I just got refreshed and relaxed, but then I got some responsibilities given to me. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. so I got to do stuff. Wait a minute. Hold on. So she was prepping me to have the energy with that grilled cheese and that quesadilla so I can go pick up that dog poop, clean the, the cat litter or whatever else needed to be done. Amen? So I look at that. And I'm receiving the word. And I'm like, wow, this is such a refreshing word, the presence of the Lord. But at the same time, the word of God is giving me responsibility that there's things I got to do. There's a way I got to live. But I thank God that, you know what, he brought it in such a way that I was just enjoying my quesadilla enjoying my grilled cheese, and ready for the main course. Amen? And it's just that main course of the word that gives me and you what we need to be able to do what we got to do. Amen? Don't be afraid if you get home, there's a quesadilla ready for you. Amen? Just, you know what, enjoy the quesadilla. Enjoy that grilled cheese. Amen? And if there's some work that come with it, hey, but thank God you got the grilled cheese first. Amen?
So I really enjoyed that. And, you know, as I was just listening to the word that goes forward, you know, Brother Oscar mentioned special ops. And I was like, Spe special ops, you know, I got to, you know, I didn't know what ops meant. So I had to go and look, you know, special operations. Amen. You know, and as he's sharing that, I was thinking like, man, you know, that is so amazing because there's a reason and a purpose and they realize they're on a mission. You know, so imagine if we're in that state of mind where we're not just walking just to live, but we're walking with a purpose. As Brother Gabriel and Brother Oscar shared, there's a reason and a purpose, and it's to be the light in this world, to represent Christ, and to know that it's not just what we preach, but it's how we live. It's to be doers of the word. It's to be in constant relationship with him. You know, and, and I was kind of feeling a little down, brothers, as you guys were sharing those testimonies, because I'm like, man, they're living them special ops. You know, Brother Gabriel buying Starbucks for his employees, you know, Brother Oscar at the party witnessing and all that. And I'm like, man, I'm kind of guilty, man, because there's been some places that I've been that I was kind of more like an undercover ops. I just wanted to get in, do my thing, and then get out. Oh, I'm the only one. I got you. All right. Praise the Lord. You guys are all special ops. Amen. But, you know, and, and I find myself many times more in that place where I'm just like, no, you know, and sometimes it's just from being tired. Sometimes it's just from you got a lot in your mind. Sometimes you got a little, you know, different things or maybe you got a, you know, you got some issues. You know, you're, you're dealing maybe, you know, whatever it may be, you know, with the employees. Maybe you're not getting along or whatever it is. You know, we got all these issues that try to keep us from doing what God has called us to do. But let us be encouraged today. We have been equipped with everything that we need. Your life and the labor that you do is not in vain. It is not in vain. Everything that you do for Christ and unto the Lord every day, every moment, he sees it. He knows it. It's not a matter of, hey, everybody, look at me. No, it's, Lord, thank you, Lord, that I can do this. Thank you, Lord, that I can trust you. Thank you, Lord, that I can turn to you. Thank you, Lord, that I know that through everything I face and go through in my life, even my bad attitude, Lord, at times, Lord, you're still doing a work in me. And I can trust you that, Lord, you're in control because you're the one that started the work and your word says you're faithful to finish it. And I thank God for that because, man, I'd hate to be the one that, you, see, you know what, this is just too hard to throw me to the side. And I become like the weight set I bought many years ago that just never fully got built. You know, it's, you could tell if you look at me, that weight set never got put together. But God's not like that. He sees the finished work. He doesn't need to look at the manual. He wrote the manual. He is the manual. It's up to me and you to read the manual, to read the instructions. So me and you can be encouraged to stay in the fight, to continue to trust him, to continue to seek him. You know, and I just want to, you know, this, one of the scriptures that Brother Gabriel read here, and I just want to go back to it real quick, where it says in Philippians 2, 8, it says, in being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He humbled himself. See, in this walk, we are required to humble ourselves in obedience to him, in obedience to where he has placed us. And we might not always like it. You think Jesus liked it that he was going to go to a cross and die for our sins? No, he did it because it was the will of the Father. But he had joy, yes, but he had joy because he knew the finished work. But it was still going to be painful to go through. But he did it in obedience. And many times we find ourselves on our walk with the Lord that it's hard because the Lord has just challenged us just to be obedient. Wait on him. Trust in him. Believe in him. Know that, Lord, you're doing the work. And sometimes that may be somebody around you that the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Well, then the Lord has someone in your life for a reason and a purpose to sharpen you up a little bit more. Amen? So you might be saying, Lord, deliver me from this person. Call fire upon them. But you have to be willing to submit yourself to the Lord in obedience and say, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done because I've, and I've been through it and I still go through it and I will know will continue to go through it. But it's those relationships and in those places that the Lord refines me through it. And I thank the Lord for it, but I have to stay and can't be moved because unless he tells me to. And I have to do this in obedience. 
But you know what the Bible says? Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and in due season, he will exalt you. He will exalt you. He will bring you up. He will put you in the place. He will put you in that, that, that title you're looking for in your job. He will open up that door of opportunity for a career. He will bring in the finances at that right time. He will bring in that car when you need it. He will draw in your family member that you're praying for in that time. He is in control. But are we willing to humble ourselves in obedience to trust him? To trust him. You know, it's not easy being the pastor I used to love just being out, you know, Pastor Abel, because I would, you know, kind of like give Pastor Abel a hard time many times. Because I wasn't the pastor. And I knew that I was like, you know, you got it all. But many times I had to trust Pastor Abel and the decisions and the things that he did, not because I, I liked it all the time, but I learned that's my pastor. And I have to trust the fact that the Lord is giving him the wisdom and the direction that is needed for my life because I know that God has placed me here. And don't get me wrong, I ask many times, Lord, am I supposed to be here? <laughs> Do I stay here? Even in the times where I felt like they didn't really, they were very cautious of us at a time. But through that, God wanted me to learn obedience and humbleness. And it is he that exalts you in due time. He puts you in the place that he has for you, but what he does first is he works in our hearts. He teaches us humility. Because we could say we have humility, but true humility is in our actions and how we submit to him. I shared this a couple of years ago through a message. Many times we want to help someone. But there's two ways about it. There's a way that you should come to someone and say, I'm here to help you. And the other way about it is, how can I help you? How can I help you? What is your need? Not I'm here to help you because if I'm here to help you, well, I'm here to help you. And look, Brother Oscar, this is how you're going to do this. This is how you're going to preach the word. This is how you're going to build that. This is what you're going to do because this is what I know and this is how I can help you because I'm very knowledgeable in that. Instead of saying, so you know what, how can I help you? What do you need? Yes, I know this, that, but how can I help you? What do you need help with today? And it's laying everything aside for the sake of obedience, for what is the need. See, Christ filled that need for me and you. He could have came and overthrew Rome. He's the king of kings, but instead he humbled himself in obedience because he came to a world that was in need of a savior, who a perfect lamb who would die for the sins and die in our place and take the wrath of a holy God so that we could be a people that can come into the holy presence of God because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is our walk. Stay in relationship with the Lord. Stay humble. Trust God and his timing. Science family, I love you guys. I didn't realize you guys had been here for over a year and a, like a year and a half already. And you guys have come and they were here when we got here originally. And to see them back here again with us, and, you know, and to see the things they've gone through and all of that, but to see their hearts still after the Lord. You've sat, you've received, you've come, and you've trusted God. And today, the Lord is restoring everything. Because he's faithful and true. God is able to do that. He is a good God. He is a good God. Alex and Natalie, keep trusting God. Keep walking out that walk in faith. Because you are your own man and own woman of God, who he created you to be. And thank God that they gave you the greatest gift to know Jesus.
greatest gift you could ever have. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in his time, he will exalt you. But meanwhile, Lord, how can I serve you? Somebody taught me that many years ago. And I, it, it stuck with me. Was to, have I ever asked the Lord, Lord, how can I serve you today? What can I do for you? What is the need that is needed today, Lord? And Lord, can I be the one that fills that need and helps somebody in that need? Not, Lord, this is how I'm going to serve you. No, Lord, how can I serve you? And what that has done for me is help me to see when pride tries to set in. It helps me to see and recognize when I'm kind of going off a little bit. Because it's very easy for us to fall into that place without realizing it. I thank God for his word and his teaching. And thank you for bringing forth the word of God today. Thank you, church, for continuing to trust the Lord. Thank you for continuing to stand and persevere and endure through all the trials, the tribulations, through the uncertainties, through the questions, through everything that has gone on. Thank you for trusting the Lord and standing on the solid, firm foundation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and being immovable. Because your faith is in Jesus still today, amen? Praise the Lord. Rejoice because he is a good God. You can rejoice today because he is a good, faithful God. Stay in it. Continue to trust him and know that all things are possible for him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just thank you this day. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor. We thank you for this time today. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness, grace, and mercies and your love. We thank you for your joy, for the joy of the Lord is our strength, my God. And we thank you, Father God, as you continue to teach us your word, my God. And Lord, we thank you that you have given us all the provisions that is needed, my God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that, Lord, we are on a mission while we're here, Lord. And everywhere that we go and all that we do, Lord God, Lord, you have a reason and a purpose for it, my God. So, Father, let us not just go to work or to school or to the marketplace or, Father God, to wherever it is that we go to a family gathering, Lord, or wherever it is, Lord. But, God, help us to recognize and be reminded that we are going with a purpose. And help us to humble ourselves in obedience to you, Lord, trusting you through the work, and Lord, knowing that, Father, everything is beautiful in its time. And, Father, you are good. You are a good God. And, Lord, we just thank you this day. For, my God, there is no other like you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you for your word falling on good ground. And, Lord, now we ask you to help us by your spirit to go and be doers of your word. And Father, we thank you today as we ask you together, how can we serve you, Lord? What can we do for you, Lord God? Lord, and help us to be the ones that can help in those times of need for those around us, Lord. But we cannot do this without you, Lord. We need you. We love you. We praise you. We bless you this day, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We are dismissed this morning. Amen. You guys have a blessed Sunday, a blessed week. May the Lord continue to lead you and guide you and direct you. Remember, Wednesday night Bible study, and we're looking forward to having baptisms in two weeks. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you. We are dismissed. And don't forget your children.